Hi, this is Dr. Jones at Winthrop University, and I want to talk to you about designing web pages for learning. I probably should have entitled this Designing Websites for Learning, because then this next slide would make more sense. I don't want to insult your intelligence, but let's talk for a moment about what a website is. Uh, a website is a collection of web pages, and they're written in a language called Hypertext Markup Language, or HTML. Uh, you may see at the end of web pages the extension .htm or .html. Uh, what that means is, is that that's the type of document it is. Much like a Microsoft Word document would end in .doc uh, or .docx, uh, the, a web page ends with a particular uh, extension as well. Web pages are created with editors. And what editors do is they write the code that web pages need to be recognized by a browser. The, now, I want, I want you to take a, a look at, at what code looks like. This is the standard code for any web page. And what you're going to see is, is that HTML code is usually contained in these things that I was taught to call wickets. They may have another name, but I've always learned to call them wickets. So an, a web page starts with wicket HTML wicket. And if you come to the very bottom of the page, what you'll see is you will see that code repeated, but it'll be preceded by a backslash. That means that the code is turned off. So this turns the code on, this turns the code off. An easier example is to look at the title. The title is the information that shows up in the top of a web browser. So if you look at the top of the web page, it's going to have a title in there. If you were to bookmark that web page, the title is what would show up as the name of the bookmark. But the code for title is wicket title wicket, and then it's closed with wicket backslash title wicket. Now, the uh, all code has to have an opening uh, and a closing. So, but this is the standard code that would appear on every uh, web page. If we take a look at some more common pieces of code, uh, you will recognize things like bold. Uh, so that's going to be wicket b wicket, and it's going to be closed with wicket backslash b wicket. Uh, italics uh, has an I as its code designator. This would be the code that would be used for a numbered list. So in most of your editors, what you're going to do is, much like in word processing, you're going to select your text and you're going to click on a button that makes that word have the formatting you want it to have. Whether that's color, whether that's bold, whether that's a list, uh, the editor is writing code for your web page. The reason that you're going to need code, for the most part, is to embed objects. If you think for a moment about web pages where you see YouTube videos that are embedded on the page and the play button is in the middle of the video and the video gets watched on that web page, that YouTube video is embedded onto the page. And what you have to do whenever you get that code is you have to make sure that you get all of the code. So you have to make sure that you're copying from the beginning or the opening of that, uh, in this case, wicket iframe width equals, uh, and that you go all the way to the end where you're getting the closing tag as well. But it's not just YouTube videos that you can embed. There are other things that you can embed on your pages as well. You can embed an infographic on the page so that it shows up as part of the web page and not as a link to another page. You may have heard of Quizlet. If you haven't, we'll cover it later in the class, but if you create a quiz using Quizlet, you can embed that quiz right on the web page. There are lots of different types of media that can be embedded, and as you look at different tools that we're going to work with, you'll, you'll begin to see links for embed. And what that means is, is when you click that link, it will give you the code that you need to make that object appear as part of your web page 
and not as a link to another web page. And anything we can keep on the same web page is going to help the learner. There's actually a website called embed.ly slash code, which will make any web page embeddable on your website. That gets a little redundant at times, or perhaps we should call it a little meta to embed a web page on a web page. But you can get web you can get embed code generated from there for a variety of different things. One final point here, and that is that we're going to write our websites in editors. Whether you choose Google Sites, whether you choose Weebly or Wix or some other editor, the editors are going to let us build our web pages and we're going to create that collection of web pages and it will be a website. This whole, all these pages together will be your website. Browsers let us look at the pages. So we, we write things in editors and then we look at them using our browsers. Um, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Safari, Chrome uh, are, are the most common browsers that you've probably worked with and would names you would recognize. The one thing you need to remember is that not all browsers show things the same way. Sometimes things will look differently in Internet Explorer than they would in Chrome or Firefox. This isn't something at this level that you can do a whole lot to control for. Uh, typically, if you're going with an editor like Weebly or Wix, they're going to handle a lot of that conversion for you, so it's going to be as about as seamless as you can make it. This has been Marshall Jones at Winthrop University talking about designing web pages for learning.